Welcome, dear traders. It's me, Kate Stichin, and you're watching a recap of the Asian session. U.S. stock indexes fell sharply on a Thursday. Asian stock markets also kicked off Friday with a decline. Gold and oil prices dropped today as well. U.S. Treasury yields stumbled considerably. What's more? Commodity currencies lost momentum. What caused such pessimism? Let's find out the reasons. Market uncertainty occurred amid recession fears. Investors are worried that further monetary tightening could lead to an economic downturn. The first alarming sign was the banking crisis in the mid-March. Back then, the U.S. regional bank, working with a half of all U.S. startups and 44% of all venture-backed tech and healthcare companies, and collapsed in just a few hours. High tech uh, played a cruel joke on the bank. Depositors were able to withdraw their funds uh, very quickly with a few clicks uh, on the keyboard. And the US government had to interfere, but the days of a Silicon Valley bank were already numbered. Traders were unpleasantly surprised by the fact of a how easily and quickly a crisis can develop and lead to irreversible results. This is why the longer central banks stick to aggressive tightening and the higher the chance of a new crisis. While Japan and China are committed to an alt-to-lose stance, the United States, the Eurozone and the UK are hooks. The Fed is widely expected to raise the key rate by at least at a quarter point in early May, as the Fed Watch tool shows more than 87% of traders are betting on a further tightening, and the hawkish comments of the Fed policymakers have only increased such expectations. However, almost all investors agree that new rate hikes by top central banks could lead to a steeper drop in economic expansion. In turn, it could bring you fears of a global recession. The US dollar climbed to meet recession fears and expectations of new rate hikes. In the morning, it was moving in the bullish channel of 101.70 and 102.00. However, the greenback's moderate rise to 102 points looks more like a consolidation. U.S. government bond yields fell sharply yesterday. It may signal a possible trend reversal. Besides, the risks of a default in the United States are mounting again. If the divided Congress fails to raise the federal government's $31.4 trillion debt ceiling, the country could face a default that would shake the United States and even world economies. Investors are already quite worried about such a scenario. Japan will hardly decide to adjust its monetary policy stance given the economic woes and the banking sector turmoil in the United States and the European Union. New Bank of Japan Governor Katsuo Ueda pointed out that any changes will not happen quickly. Therefore, investors do not expect any surprises from the Bank of Japan meeting scheduled for April 27 and 28. A policy reversal also looks unlikely, as inflation in Japan fell to 3.2% in March from 3.3% in February. Core inflation, which uh, strips out both food and energy costs, held steady at 3.1% from February in annual terms. Nevertheless, inflation is still above the 2% target. It fuels market expectations about the policy change. Some analysts assume that the regulator may start phasing out its stimulus program at the end of 2023, and the yen was perhaps the only currency that managed to benefit from the market uncertainty. In the American session yesterday, it moved away from a high of 134.7. In the Asian session today, tested the support level of 133.70.
The yen looks attractive amid relatively low inflation in Japan compared to the eurozone and the United States and the robust recovery of the domestic economy. The four-risk aversion in a stock markets boost demand for the safe haven yen. Besides, foreign U.S. Treasury yields are narrowing the gap with the Japanese government bonds. All these factors bolstered the steady rise in the yen. As a result, um, it entered the red price Canada of 133.70 and 134.30. A breakout of the support level of 133.70 will cement the bearish trend. However, the United States will unveil its PMI data today. If the figures are positive, the US dollar may regain momentum. The Australian dollar remained unchanged ahead of a crucial US data after moving between the low of 0.6778 and the high of 0.6749, it drifted to 0.6685. The Aussie rose slightly amid the Reserve Bank of Australia's decision to continue monetary tightening. As the meeting minutes showed, the regulator is determined to curb sky-high inflation. The pause was made only to assess the situation in the economy and the labor market. Today, the Aussie is a trading with a bearish bias. A breakout of the support level of 0.6720 led to a decline below the uh, pivot level of 0.6700, and the next target level is located at 0.6680. The Kiwi tested its five-week lows and the Kiwi dollar was trading in the range of 0.6135. It sank not only because of external factors such as the falling stock indexes and the relatively strong US dollar. New Zealand's economy shrank significantly due to high inflation. Although consumer prices dropped to 6.7% from a 6.2% uh, in the first quarter of 2020, it is still twice the target of 2 and 3 percent. The regulator has already raised the rate by 500 basis points since October 2021, and it means that the central bank is highly likely to remain hawkish for a longer period of time. However, even expectations of a new rate hikes did not help the Kiwi climb. In the Asian session, the New Zealand dollar was fluctuating in the bearish price corridor of 0.6126 and 0.6182. It may shed more than 2% by the end of the week. That's all for now. We hope our video reviews help you open only profitable trades. Subscribe to the channel and keep close tabs on the market developments with us. See you soon.